Welcome back. Razor here again. This time I'm going to be showing you my latest creation. It has to do with Soul Urns. It's an automatic Soul Urn factory. Now it, it is separated from the clay and kiln production because you cannot pass regular urns through Soul Sand filters. But it does automatically w create Soul Urns from urns. Now I went way over the top with this. I made it way more complicated than I needed to be. So I made it way cooler. So the first thing you need, of course, is urns from the auto automatic kiln. Uh, see my automatic kiln video if you want to see that. So let me just... I already made a stack of urns for this demonstration. Now let's go over here and read the instructions. So the first thing you want to do with this is grind some netherrack. And it says to do that up the ladder. So let's go up the ladder to the grinding station and grind some netherrack. Now that we have some netherrack grinding, let's go ahead and go down and read step two. So step two, to put urns in the hopper at the end of this building. So let's go do that. Okay, place the urns. Now it says use the counter to select up to 63 urns to produce. Here is a binary counting machine. Now due to binary limitations you can only make up to 63 at a time, not 64, because one slot is taken up by all zeros. And how you use this is you push each button and that will light it up. So right now I would produce 32 urns and I push this one. Now, you would, now I'm going to produce 32 plus 16, so 48 urns, and so on and so forth. And when all of them are lit, that means it will produce 63 urns. It says step four to turn it on. Now you, if you notice outside, there's a big sign up there that says done. Now that is the d default state for when the machine is not running. So let's go ahead and turn the system on. And notice immediately that this block dispenser starts throwing out ground netherrack. Now once it shoots out eight, this piston pulls back and the ground rather now the rack is filtered through the hopper. Once it's filtered, it will then hit this pressure pad. And that pressure pad sends a sends a signal to uh pull up the pressure pad and allow the uh concentrated hellfire through or the hellfire dust, I mean. It also sends a signal saying that one urn has been made, so it will subtract automatically one from this counter. So this is a, a current amount of urns going to be produced counter. And you see, you see that one just turned off, so it just counted down by one. Now next you should see one and two come on, but the four light go off. Yeah. Now this is counting down, decrementing in binary. So it'll keep doing this all the way down until all of them are turned off again. And then you'll have 63 urns created. As you can see, I have ground netherrack before this 
demonstration. And this will just keep going. Um, at the end of it, I have a cauldron. I've actually become quite partial to using cauldrons for most of my builds as makeshift chests because they're a lot easier than making a hopper and powering it and having a chest underneath. And also as a side of dual effect, it will cook your hellfire dust into concentrated hellfire. Now let's go back outside. And you notice that since I turned it on, the sign has gone completely black, like it's dark. It doesn't no longer says done. It will go back to saying done once all these lights are off. There's zero left. Now the wiring, the wiring is really a mess. You really probably won't be able to tell what's going on here. So first, I guess I'll show you the decrementing circuit. So each each of these right here is connected to a button. And I am transferring that signal down, vertically down. And it's going to one of these circuits. So it goes to a mono stable and a piston T flip flop. And then that flip flop alters an AND gate. And I've connected a whole bunch of these together where these AND gates at the end, the signal is connected to the next monostable and to the next AND gate. This is a circuit that I recently learned about and it's a, it's a decrementing circuit. So if I can make it all the way over here. This is the signal that comes from that pressure plate and it acts as the subtract one signal. So every time that pressure plate is pushed, the signal will go through this whole circuit and subtract one from it. And because of the way it's set up, it will work for up to 63 because I have six um, six flip-flops so it can store six bits of data. Now the rest of this is just a mess of wiring because I was trying to make it compact. Here is that output from the pressure plate. It goes to a mono stable which will change a one-bit memory cell and cause the block dispenser to pick up the pressure plate. It also goes to a timing circuit that makes sure that everything is done subtracting before it tries to start the next cycle. And it goes down to the subtracting circuit itself as well. Now what flips the this memory cell the other way is the monostable over here. And this monostable will turn on only if the lever is on. It is not zero, that is one of the lights has to be on. And the subtracting signal is done. So that subtracting s signal serves two purposes. It makes sure that it's done subtracting before it starts making the next urn. And it also serves to, to pulse this monostable because it'll turn off and on. This monostable also goes to this memory cell which controls the clock. And uh, that clock 
will go eight times because of this block dispenser. This controls uh, outputting exactly eight ground netherrack into the water each time. So after eight pulses of this, it will change this memory cell to stop the uh, outputting of ground netherrack. And when it does that, it also changes this memory cell to put the pressure plate back out with this block dispenser. Now that, that this memory cell here also controls whether the piston is pushed out or not. So that's very important too, to block the water flow. Now this monostable is hooked up to the on-off lever and to this big AND gate. Now this AND gate is the uh, zero or not zero AND gate. So all those six flip-flops down below are connected to this one AND gate so I can tell whether or not the, the counter is at zero. And what that and the on lever will do is pulse this monostable and flip the state of the done sign up top. Well, that's pretty much the wiring of this. I don't expect many people to be able to f understand my mess of wiring. I mean, the concept isn't that hard, but I wired it rather awfully. It's rather a mess. So, I'll just sit here until this is all done. I'm just going to skip to right before it's done. Welcome back. I've let this machine run for a while, and as you can see, it only has five more urns left to produce. And there are five urns left. So Let's just run through how this works one more time. This block dispenser will dispense eight ground netherrack into this pool of water. And once it has done that, this piston will retract, and the water will push the ground netherrack over a hopper with a sole sand filter. They will land on the wooden pressure plate and cause the block dispenser to pick it up, allowing the water flow to push the hellfire into the cauldron, which will then cook it into concentrated hellfire. Now it appears I may have miscalculated and it actually can make 64 soul urns. I had not fully run this because of lack of materials beforehand, before this demonstration. Okay, now that it has one left Let's go out and take a look at the sign and watch it change to done. Oh, there we go. So this way, on any of these islands that consists of my base, I can just look over here and see if the sign says done or not to tell if I should come pick up my soul urns or not. 